In this video we will have a look at uh, function input and uh, a little bit more about displaying results in the command window. So uh, normally when you write your scripts uh, you have to define the variables um, so that the code can run. But sometimes you don't want to predefine something, you'd like to leave, maybe there are some parameters in a formula that you'd like to leave to the next user to insert them without you suggesting what the value should be. So the code is written so that it can run once those are given. So I, ha I have here the example that we would like to write a code which will calculate average score of three games. Uh, but without predefining what those scores are. So for that we use function input. And how it works is that once uh, you run a piece of code which asks, asks for input, it will throw you to command window where uh, the user would have to type in that input. So let's take a new file and start. So I want uh, to insert three scores and I use function input. Now the way it works is that in here we can just type the text we want MATLAB to display as an information for the user. So uh, let's say score of game one and when when I just run this, I have to save the file. When I run it, uh, MATLAB kind of automatically jumps to command window and it displays this score of game one. And now you see the prompt cursor is, is, is flashing and it says here waiting for input. So now it's really waiting for you to insert the result. Uh, I'll just, let's say I type 8. So what happens now is that my value 8, which I gave, goes into variable ans. Uh, why? Because I asked for input but I didn't say where I'm going to save it. So now I know that I have to add here this so-called address where that value will be placed. And I would like to do the same for two more games. So I'll just copy paste and change it like this. So now it should ask me for three things. Uh, in, uh, score of game one, two and three. So once again when I run, uh, score of game one let's say eight. When I press enter it, it stores that uh, result and automatically goes to ask me for the next one. So let's say it was five and then ten the last one. So when you've inserted everything, you can see that the values are stored in our workspace and as variables they can actually be used for the calculation. So then we can write uh, what we wanted, so the average score, and that will be the sum of the three, so g1 plus g2 plus g3 and divided by three. So then once again some three scores and then we have the average score. And once we have it we can display that result somehow with, with some explanatory text. So we already learned how to use function disp. Uh, an alternative is so called fprintf and uh, that's the one where you can also nicely combine text and uh, numerical values. So how it works is that uh, we put function name fprintf and then we basically put in uh, the piece of text we, want, we would like to display. So I would say the average game score is and now here's the place where I would like to put a number. So that numerical result which is my average score. And what I do, I 
now tell MATLAB that there is going to come in floating number. Float is the way we call uh, the category of, of number float or double. Uh, so, and this percent sign here now is it doesn't work as a comment anymore, it is actually like a reference. But for MATLAB to know what it should put in here, then after this text, after a comma, uh, you have to say from which variable it's supposed to actually pull it out. So now when I run it, let's put this course once again. Now it says the average game score is this. And now this is uh, when you choose this uh, class F, this is the way it shows. Uh, so by default with six uh, decimals, but you can define it here. So actually uh, you can define how wide your space is, so what's the minimal width maybe, and also how many decimals you want to see. So now the width, first I will put zero, uh, so it means that it should just adjust the width of this numerical space to the number, and let's say I want to see only two decimals. So I will only now run this one so that we don't have to uh, insert the scores every time, evaluate selection, so you see now it, all, it showed it uh, just with the two decimals. Uh, now this width of, of the place, for instance, I'll make it much bigger, so 10, so what will happen is that uh, it will not add any digits here, but it will add space in front of this number, because you're kind of saying that you're preparing space for at least uh, 10 characters and that includes those decimals and uh, the dot. So since we already have four in here, there'll be like six extra spaces in front of this one. Let's run it and see. Yeah, so there are six extra spaces. So usually you don't really have to define that width unless there is some particular reason. If you just put zero here, it's fine. And then, uh, except floating, uh, float, there is there are also other specifiers. There are some for characters, for integers, and so on. You can uh, look into help. I have fprintf open here already. So uh, when you scroll down a little bit. There is more explanation here about how, how to construct uh, this. So as I said, this uh, the one after the dot is the precision, so how many decimals you want to see, and then here is the uh, field width. And this table now shows us uh, other types of specifiers. So we can have uh, we can have yeah, f is for fixed point, sorry, not float, uh, e is for exponential notation, so if you really want to see it with this e, uh, so 10 power something, uh, maybe what is, maybe sometimes useful is the c and s, so for single characters or, or a string array. Uh, okay. And one more thing, uh, in uh, displaying sometimes you want to put a piece of information into a new line. So in that case you can uh, put this mark uh, backslash n, so that one creates new line. If you, if you notice now uh, my text was printed, but kind of the prompt uh, symbol remained in the same line, so when I run this one now, it should actually drop it down to to the next line. And I could have broken it anywhere I like, so now I will have my results actually in two lines. Yes. And you can combine more, so I'll just now artificially put 
more text. So I repeat maybe uh, same type. So I could have more numerical inputs, it's perfectly fine, and they can be of the same or different specifiers, but then what is important is that here in your input arguments you have to provide this many uh, inputs as well. So now I will uh, just repeat what was there, or maybe I can add something to one of them so that you can see that actually uh, they can also be different. So let's run this one again, some scores. Uh, so you see now uh, the first one that came is actually now 14 plus 3 because it was the one I gave the our average score variable plus 10 and the other two were just average score so they are displayed in here. Let's remove maybe the yes or we could have one more Actually, let, yes, let's comment this one and say like this. The individual scores where, and now we will put Uh, three of those and this and the uh, average score was Like this. So now I have four values and the first three ones are the three games which I know are in my variables g1, g2 and g3 and the last one is that average score. So let's try running this one. Yeah, so we have the output. The individual scores were 3, 6 and 3 and the average score was 4.0.